the Song of the Lamb. The Song of the Lamb. So I'd like for you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 5. And uh, we want to look at a few things in that thing. And there are two things here that we're going to be looking for. There's two things that are mentioned. Uh, there is prayer and there is a song concerning the Lamb. And uh, so let's, let's go Revelation 5, and we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the, the prayers of the saints, and, notice the conjunction there, and they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So, so it, it seems like that prior to this, they just merely did one thing, and it was that they sent up prayers to the Lord. Uh, but now there's something new that's been added. There's something they've added to that. Notice my words, they've added that to the prayers. Um, and it's a song. And it's a song that glorifies the Lamb. And remember, this is a new song. This is a new song. So we're going to see that again in Revelation 15, if you'll turn there with me. Revelation chapter 15, 2 and 3. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. They sing the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways. Thou art King of saints. So they're talking about the victory, and they're singing this song of the Lamb, but they said, and it says that they overcame the beast, and they overcame his mark, and they overcome all of these things. And you know that in Revelation chapter 12, it, it already talks about that, that uh, well, I can read it to you, Revelation 12, 10 and 11. And here we see the victory that they got and why they didn't just sing the song of redemption like they did at the Red Sea, but they sing the song of the Lamb. Revelation 12, starting with verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down. Well, I got news for everybody. He, he was cast down to the earth where they're at. I mean, he was accusing them in heaven. Now he's down there with them, attacking them. But they're, they're singing a new song. Uh, uh, is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Okay, so that is actually the death of the Lamb where he shed his blood. And uh, the word of their testimony, and the word testimony is martyrdom, the word of their martyrdom, and they love not their lives unto the death. So this is all overcoming by not the song, but the Lamb that is within them in relationship to us. So I want you to notice they didn't overcome by prayer. Now, I don't have anything against prayer. In fact, we're going to be seeing that in relationship to the song. So the real scripture that I wanted to get to is a psalm. It's Psalm 42. And if you'll turn to Psalm 42, we'll start with verse 6 and 7. And Psalm 42, uh, there is a crisis. There is trouble. And so this is verse um, 6 and 7 of Psalm 42. Oh my God. That's kind of the way we do it. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. 
Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites, from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. So he is talking about being cast down. And we usually use that term deep calleth unto deep as some sort of a spiritual thing. But he's saying all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. He's cast down into this situation. So there's clearly trouble. There's clearly a crisis and uh, verse, the next verse, the next two verses, actually, well, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just do the next verse. Verse 8. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. Okay, so it's presenting, it's presenting that the Lord is commanding two things. He's commanding the, His loving kindness in the daytime, but in the night, in the dark, when we're going through the dark times, He commands His song. Okay? So verse 9 says, I will say unto God my rock, Why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? So there's two things going on in the darkness of night, when you're going through times of darkness, when you're going through night and and there is no light to be seen. And that is, a, we're, we're referring to these scriptures now, that is questioning and his song. Questioning and his song. So the words that we just read, David wrote these words. David's the guy who wrote them. But it's also talking about Jesus on the cross. Okay. So they are clearly, David's going through something, but he's found something. Jesus is going through something, but he also found something, if you can say that. So the questioning is this, okay? Why hast thou forgotten me? Why hast thou forsaken me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Why do the innocent suffer? Where is my God? All right. So you remember similar things being said in Matthew. I'll just read it for you. Matthew 27, verse 42 and 43 says, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. All right. So these, these are the questions, not for himself. The Lord's not asking, in, in, and the way it sounds like David wasn't either, asking these questions for himself. Um, but he's asking them for us because we're the ones who need to ask. We need to ask these questions. Why hast thou forgot, uh, forsaken me? What, we need to ask these in the darkness. Why hast thou forgotten me? Why hast thou forsaken me? Why go on mourning? Why do the innocent suffer? Where is my God? Those are all right questions. They're correct. They're not perverted questions. They're good questions to ask. Okay? Um, so uh, he says this in that just before when I read that. Why? What? Da 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 da. He's asking God, my rock. He's not asking. The hidden God, this is the one he stands on. This is the one he has faith on. Okay? So, um, he is, and he said this, he sings the song of the Lamb. He sings his song in the night, in the darkness, when things are scary. He sings that song. And, and David sung it, and Jesus sang it on the cross. He sings it, though sacrificed, 
they sing. He sings it even in the night, and especially in the night. So there is a divine harmony. There's a divine uh, duet, if you will, going on here. And it's the, his song and my prayer. His song and my prayer. And you heard what his prayer was, right? Some of the things of his prayer. So in Psalm 42, we see both of those things at work. The, the two come together. And the Lamb's song the Lamb song should accompany our prayer. Remember, the, and we started off with the book of Revelation, and we were reading that, and, and it was saying that these are the, the, the bowls holding the prayers of the saints, but they added something new now. The song of the Lamb. See, it's a new song. <laughs> They're adding it to their prayers, and so should we. <laughs> so I wrote this. Um, it is not faithless to include my prayer while singing his song. While singing his song. It's not faithless. Um, my prayer may be in agony, but I'm not waiting for his song to override my prayer. This is, a, this is something we have to learn. And I'll give you an example here real quick. But a lot of times we're looking for his song to override our prayers of fears or doubts or whatever that we're going through at the time. But the, uh, I wrote down, the song should be in my heart while I pray the prayers. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example of Jesus. This is in Mark 14, verse 35 and 36. <clears throat> and he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed. So notice that we have prayer, okay? And he prayed that if it were possible, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Well, this is really kind of amazing. I mean, he's, he's falling to the ground. It, this sounds like true agony. He's falling, praying, and he's saying, if it were possible, and then he makes this statement, but all things are possible with you. So he knows that he could, he could turn on the lamb song. He knows that he could pray it away. That God would be capable, see? And a lot of times when we pray, and I know we've got a short amount of time here, but a lot of times when we pray, we're praying. Um, we, don't, we don't know really what to pray. We go, well, should I pray that the Lord heal him, or should I pray that the God use it, or whatever? Well, I think you can pray both prayers, but you've got to sing the song. You've got to sing the song, okay? So... Uh, and, the, and then he says, Abba, Father, all things, and I love that, and I cannot take the time to go into all this, but he's, that's what, Abba, Father, is at the cross. All things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thou wilt. Jesus asked the prayer. He does, he does. He asks in prayer, but he chooses the song. Praise God. So, we do pray and we pray usually when we pray we pray a lot of times in the depths of our despair the night comes upon us and how many people do you know that in the depths of despair and the darkness comes upon them and they ask for a song but that's that's it we need to ask for the song few people are asking for the song most expect the removal of the night of the dark lord remove the darkness get the night out of here but my hope, and, and I believe your hope, is not in your prayers. My hope is not in my prayers. Uh, my hope is in His song. And my hope is in God, not just in from God. That's what David said, my hope is in God. He didn't say, my hope is from God. And He's going to do something and fix this. Um, another thing I can read to you. I, I still ask the questions, but the song reminds me of the answers. But they're the answers of the Father's heart. They're the answers of God's heart. 
The song is in the night. The song is in spite of the night. Praise God. Why? Why? Why is the song in spite of the night? Because the, the rainbow, rainbow is still there, you know, in the clouds. The rainbow is still in the clouds. Did we forget that? <laughs> and so I, I wrote this, a darkened eye does not necessarily remove the heart song. What I'm, when I say darkened eye, I'm talking about it's so dark that we can't see, but there is a light in our hearts that is not in our eyes. And, the, and when our eyes are dark and we can't necessarily see, then our heart has a song. We have to change directions within our being. Um, so, here's my conclusion. <laughs> here's my conclusion. This is my, the conclusions that I have come to in Psalm 42, these are the conclusions. My soul is capable of singing in the daylight, but Lord, give me your song in the night. Because anyone can sing in the daytime, in the light, the brightness of the glory of the light. But give me your song in the night. Next thing, prayers that seek the Lamb's song get eternal answers. I love that one. <laughs> I love that. Because we're just, are we just looking for answers? Or are we looking for eternal answers? The next one is, give me the lamb song that allows the soul to question in prayer, but not to doubt or turn from God's greater purpose. See? We can, we can pray the questions. We can Bring them up. David did. They were right there. That was in prayer, but not those things weren't in the song. You know. And you saw Jesus wrestle through, but then I'm going with the song. Um, next one. Give me the song that thrives in suffering and sorrow. The song of the Lamb. It thrives. It thrives in suffering and sorrow. And it overcomes those all those things. And then finally, when going through trials, may the Lamb sing His song in our hearts. That's my prayer. That's my prayer. If, if in sharing this, if, if nothing else, my heart and my prayer for y'all is that the Lamb can sing His song in our hearts. Wasn't that wonderful what David said? You should go back to Psalm 42 and just particularly those verses um, 7 and 8, uh, 9 and 10 there. The Lord touched me so much. I was so blessed. I was so brought to His presence and to more, more of His heart instead of my religious ways. Let's pray. Father, thank You so much for Your Word and thank You that um, your word speaks to us today, tonight, in, in the day and in the night. We are so aware of your loving kindness in the day. May we become more and more aware of your song in the night, in the darkness, and finding you. Father, thank you for hungry hearts and people who gather, Lord Jesus, at your feet, like Mary, to hear your word to hear your word, to wash away our word, to wash away our fears, to wash away our thoughts, and, and not, in the, not in the daytime, but to do that in the darkness so that your song comes out of our heart. They sang a new song to him. It was about him. They were filled with a good thing, even in the dark. So thank you. Thank you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love your heart. We love your nature. We love that you put yourself in us and made us one. Bless you, Lord. In your name, amen.